So in this lesson, we're going to be showing you some of the functionality where we can make a request to some JSON data and return back that data as a whole. We can also separate out the data and select out individual parts of the data. So here we've got some previous and next buttons. And what they're doing is simply selecting the data content that was available to us within that request and selecting it, moving it across the index values of the data, the JSON data that was being returned back. That's all coming up in this lesson. We're going to be going over and getting some JSON content and outputting it into the page. So we're using fetch to request content and output it into the page. We've selected the main page elements. That's the only one that we've got some content here. That's our basic page. Uh, this is the source for the JSON content. So this is JSON placeholder, type code posts, and you can use any JSON source. So this is just a good example of some of the content that you can select from that web page. We're going to be adding it in as a URL path within this exercise and then selecting it when we want on the web page. So whenever we've clicking the button and we're going to create a button on the page. So using the document create element, creating an element, the tag of button and within button add in some text content and it'll get just get data and then adding that to the main page using append, appending the button to your HTML page. So there's our button. Let's make it clickable and we're going to get the action where we're going to be getting the JSON data. So selecting that content and using the button, we're adding an event listener. The event that we're listening for is going to be a click and select the content from the page. So we're going to be making a fetch request and then returning back the content into the page. So the fetch request is going over to the URL where we've got the posts data and this is going to be chained. So after it gets the response, we want to return back the response object within the as a JSON formatted content. So the response object we're using it as JSON, so we're turning it back as JSON into the next step of the chain. And then we're selecting it as data. And then this is now a usable format. And for now, what we'll output it, uh, the data into the console. So get data, and that loads all of that content into the page. So we've got a hundred items there that we can sift through. And now we want to select it and add it into the page. So we're adding it in as list items. And I'm going to add that into main as well. So we'll create an unordered list using the document, create element, create the unordered list. And that will give us an area that we can add list items to. So for the main, and this is important because where you want to position the elements that you're creating, uh, that's going to be depending on the order that you're adding them and pending them to main. So we go into elements here, we can see under the body, under main class, we've got the unordered list above the button. So that's going to load all of that content there and then the button's going to be below it. If we want the button on top, then we append the button first and then uh, add in the unordered list. So it's a matter of how we want to do that. So let's now we can iterate through the content and I'm going to create a function that's going to add to page whatever content we've got from the data. And we notice that we do get quite a lot of data back when we're making the request. So we get a hundred items there. Uh, so we want to be able to kind of go through the items and add it to the page, to the unordered list. So first of all, we'll take the unordered list and we'll update that. So set the inner HTML and we'll just clear out if there's any existing inner HTML and then We've got data that we wanted to add in whenever we're running this function. So we're passing in the data. So this is just going to be simply updating how we're handling and managing this. So when the data comes in and it's ready, then we can run it into the function and it's still outputting into the console. So it works the same way and we can loop through using the for each method where we're going to be iterating through the content. So this will be an item. And while we're looping through the items, 
we'll create a list item using the document and create elements again. And the element that we're creating this time is going to be a list item. And then take the list item and set its text content of the list item to be the item. And notice the structure of the content here that we've got a title. We've got body and title. So we want to just select the title. And there's some dummy data that we can use there. And then we want to take the list item. And this is going to be actually the unordered list, which is going to be the parent. And then we're doing the append. And so the append child is going to return back the object there. So we can continue to use it. And I'll show you the, the difference there um, as well. So the append will just, it doesn't return back anything. So there's nothing in the callback. And I'll just uh, show you that with that, it's got a callback value. It adds in the callback content, which is the newly created list item. So if we just do an append, it will still add in the that data, but we just get undefined there. So if we want to use append child, it's got the callback and it returns back the element content. And because I'm creating a number of elements, I'm adding them to the page. So the structure is the same. Uh, so what I want to do is um, I've also got text content there and we're creating elements. So what I want to do is I want to create a function to manage it. And I'll just call this element maker. So we're going to need some parameters. So the first one is going to be the tag uh, type. The second one is going to be the text content that we want to add. And then the third one can be the parent. And so within this function, what we can do is we can create the element and uh, the element will be whatever the tag type is. And then we want to append that as a child to the parent. So I'm just updating this and this will be just temporary element. And we're appending the temporary to whatever the parent is. And then we're going to return that back. So in case we want to have any additional items added into that. So we're returning back whatever we get back for the parent as append child. And then within the temp, let's add in the text content. And the text content will be whatever we've passed into this function. So that will remove out some of the lines of code. And uh, let's set that up as the element maker. And selecting out as a list item. So we can update this function, the arguments here. The text is going to be from the item title and the parent is going to be the unordered list. So that will do the same, but it's just a few less lines of code. And we can also update our other page items with that, where we're creating the elements and we're appending it. So we can do it for the unordered list. So this is going to be appended to main is going to be the parent. There's going to be no content. So it's just going to be blank within the text content. And the element that we're making is an unordered list. So clean up a little bit of the code there. And then we can also use that where we're creating the button. So the element that we're creating is going to be a button. The text content is going to say still the same, deck, get data. And then we're appending the content to the main element. So everything still works the same, except that we've just shortened the code. We created some functions to handle some of the construction of the elements that uh, we were doing several times within this code. So it just cleaned it up and made it a little bit easier to read. You can also select out particular items. So notice that there's quite a bit there. So if you want it, for instance, to just select whatever the item is, and we can get a count value for the item. So let's go ahead and we're going to create another page element. And this will be button next. And we'll use the same function, the element maker. And this will just say next. And here we can select out and this can be previous. So that will add in some additional buttons to the page. And again, you might want to reorganize the buttons where they're showing up on the page. So we've got previous get data next buttons all on the page there. And then we can add in some actions for that. So I want to have a value for a counter and the counter can start out at zero. And then whenever we click any of the buttons, so if we're doing a button previous, we're going to add an event listener to the button previous. 
and that's going to be running the click, listening for a click event. And so here we want to have a couple conditions. So we want to get the data. So we're doing a fetch for the URL and returning back the data, but it's going to be different how we're adding it to the page. So let's create that where we're doing the fetch and the data, and we only want to return back a particular piece of the data. So making a fetch request. And this is also, you can also load all of the data into the page when it loads, and that makes it a little bit lighter uh, when you don't have to make as many requests. But this is how we can work with some live data that might be changing. So we need to make those fetch requests each time. So we're making a fetch request to the URL. We've got the data that's being returned back. And we only want to select out data that is available to us. So once this is clicked, and actually we want to not show uh, next if we're at zero. So if counter is zero, they, we don't want to show previous. So we'll just create another function that's going to update. It's going to update the buttons. So this is going to be taking into consideration what the value of counter is. And if the value of counter is less than or equal to zero, then we don't want to show a previous option. So we're going to take the button that's uh, previous, set it to disabled. And we set that to be the Boolean value of true, else we set it to be false. So that will allow the user to, that will still show the button, but it'll determine whether the, the user can click the button or not on this update buttons whenever any of the content updates. So we're going to update that fetch request as well as a function. So this is going to be getting the data value. And here we're going to run the function that's going to update the buttons. And we also want to run the update buttons. So that disabled the view of the buttons. And we're going to take the fetch request and update the buttons there. So get the data values. And I'm going to do the update of the buttons afterwards, after we do get the data. And let's clean up our code a little bit. So we're just simply going to be running this function and uh, whenever the button gets clicked. So this uh, makes it look a little bit neater. So when we run the button, I think nothing has changed. Uh, we're also updating our buttons. So that's updating them to be uh, next and previous, depending on the data. So also if here we want to add a previous button, let's update the previous button and we're going to create a function that's going to manage that. And it'll make a request, a fetch request. And for the previous button, we're actually going to be passing in a value and this will just get the, or just get the output. So we're going to be simply putting in the output depending on what we've got for the counter. So the previous button, clicking it is going to subtract from the counter. So counter is going to equal the counter minus one or in a longer format. So counter minus one. And this is only going to be if uh, the counter is greater than zero. So just a, uh, there. And if it's uh, the next button, so add those in. So button next, and we'll take care of the counter values. So whenever that's clicked, then the counter is just going to increment by one. So we'll add one to the counter. So counter equals counter uh, for the next, and uh, so it attaches the event to the buttons. And then we can run the same content here where we're getting the output because we've already updated the counter. So having that, and we're getting the data. And then instead of add to page, we can just get a, a function there that's going to get all of the data. So save that. And I'll just look at the data there once again. So this is uh, data that's within an ar uh, array format. So we can return back these items, these objects from there. And right now what we'll do is we'll console log out and just return back whatever data that we have for the data using the counter as the index value. So for next, when we click that, and we got to add the event listeners as well. So that's getting the uh, user ID one, ID one. And then we can also have a previous. So that's putting the previous one and then back to the next and getting the one with the ID three. And then we can go through the content that way. 
So let's, uh, when we're getting the output, instead of outputting to the console, we're going to output the content into the main element. And we're also going to create an additional element there. We're going to have additional content there for within the main. So we can do that as main. And we'll set the inner HTML of main. I'm going to use the template literal. So those are the back ticks where we're going to add in the value of the ID. So this is going to be the data. And uh, just to simplify things, so we've got just one object that we're working with. We'll return back this object here within a variable called val, so that we can just select the val and whatever the property is. So ID, and we can add in a new line there. And then this can be the title. And if we want, we can set that as an h1. And you can provide some additional HTML structuring. This can just be a div. And here we'll have whatever we've got for val. And then we've got uh, body content for val there. And then close off the div. So now let's see what this looks like when we do next. And it's actually removed out all of the content within the uh, main, within the main HTML. So we, we really should create a separate element that will hold the content. So I'll just call it holder. And using our element maker function, do that where we're creating a div and this div is going to be attached to main and it's just going to have whatever we've got for the content here so we'll create the text content and just call it html and here we can add in whatever we've got for the html now the only thing is that within the maker here we're updating the inner text so let's update that to inner html so we can add in the HTML elements that we've just created that way. And you can also create each HTML element separately, add it to the HTML object, and then add it to main. So that's another option that you have as well. So that way we're continuously adding these items into the main, and they're just uh, continuously getting added in there. Uh, we might want to clear out that element as well. So maybe we want to clear out main. So we may have to make some adjustments there where we have to have a separate page element where we're adding in the buttons into the body of the content. So pending it after the main. So there's a few adjustments that you can make. Uh, so this is just a great starting point where you can load the content and then update it as well. So go ahead and try it out. Go ahead and try it out to get more familiar with making a fetch request and displaying the data from that request.